So welcome to another video. In this video I want to talk about the config.xml file that is used in PhoneGap build. Now this is the file that stores the information about your app. It is an optional file but it's recommended that you create one yourself because you can set your permissions and you also set your default sort of app name, versioning, description, author information, permissions, properties, lots of different things. It's really useful to have and I'd recommend it to anyone who's creating an app using PhoneGap build. So what you're seeing right now is just a basic app built with Ratchet and literally just says this is my app. And it's got the Ratchet CSS fonts and J, uh, JS folders. It really doesn't matter what is in your app. As long as you have an index.html that is all that matters for this video uh, because we're only looking at the config.xml file. So what you want to do is go into the root directory of your app. So here in brackets so you're just going to create a new file. And it's going to be called config.xml and this is just a blank file, blank XML file and it must be in the root directory of your app right next to your index.html otherwise it will not work and it must be it must have this exact file name or phone get build won't know what file to use so what we can do is we can start off this line by typing in a square bracket followed by a question mark kinda like PHP actually and then XML and version equals and this is 1.0 this is just standard XML code, by the way, nothing phone gap specific at the moment, followed by encoding. And this is going to be UTF-8. And then close it off with the question mark and a square bracket. And inside this, what we're going to have is a widget. And a widget declares the W3C specifications and the versioning for our app and the ID for our app. We'll get into those in a moment. So what we're going to do is add a xmlns property to it and this is going to equal and then speech marks http colon slash slash www.w3.org forward slash ns forward slash widgets and then following this we're going to have xmlns colon gap and this is the phone gap namespacing so set this equal to http colon slash slash phone gap dot com forward slash ns forward slash 1.0 the next line we're gonna have the ID of the app and this is written in the form of com dot your name dot app name and this has to be unique to your app you've probably seen one of these before so it's just basically reverse domain order so app name dot your name dot com as if that was the web address so I'm going to put com dot neuro dot test app and that's what we need for that line and then following this we can have a version code which is android only and optional this is just an integer amount of your uh, apps version so this will start at one and go up to two three four and so on regardless how big or small the update is this will always go up by one so we'll start this off at one and again that's only necessary for android and then we'll add a version which is displayed in the form of uh, major minor patch so it'll be 1.0.0 as a starting one and if you make a major change this will become 2 if you make a minor change this will become 1 and if you make a patch this will increase like this and then close it off put the closing widget down here and inside of this we're going to define some properties for our app so the first thing we're going to do is create a name tag and this is clearly the name of your app so my amazing app is what I'm going to call it. Uh, description. This is obviously going to be the description of your app. This isn't what's displayed on the app store so don't worry about that. It's just going to be brief about your app. So this is my amazing pointless app. On the next line we are going to create an author tag and inside of here you're going to put your name. So I just put my name there. And then in the author tag we're going to have a href and set this equal to uh, your web address so I'll put https colon slash slash coders dash guide dot com and then you could put your email address as well so mine is neil at, oh, neil at coders dash guide dot com and I've just made a mistake here https and that is all you actually need in your xml file in your config.xml but we can also add some more. We can add some properties for our app or preferences as they're called in uh, PhoneGap. And you can see all the different preferences we can use on the PhoneGap documentation. I'll leave a link in the description. So for example, we can have preference 
and this is going to have a name of orientation and this defines the default or well this defines the orientation that your app must be used so either landscape portrait or default the default is where it changes depending on the rotation of the device and if you don't put this line in at all it will automatically be at default so the value should be I'm going to put portrait and these lines are actually self-closing so we don't need to close it off like that we just put a forward slash at the end of the line we can also add a preference for the status bar so we can either have the status bar as hidden or showing so if it's hidden then it's in full screen if it's showing then your app is not in full screen so the preference name is full screen and the value is uh, either true or false so if it's true you won't have a status bar if it's false you will so I'm going to set this to false and if you don't put this line in at all it defaults to false so actually you don't need this line at all there's a load of other preferences that you can find and use on the phone gap documentation again link in the description below there are some platform specific ones the ones I've shown you so far work on Android iOS and Windows phone but as I said there are platform specific ones so you can have a look at those as well so that's all we really need for our config.xml for a basic file we're not really going to get into permissions in this video so your app will still be displaying as requiring every single permission but I just wanted to show you the basics of an XML file so what we can do now is we can go ahead and compress this into a zip folder so compress ratchet and then we can head over to the phone get build service and create this project so over on phone get build I'm just going to upload a zip file and it's this ratchet.zip on my desktop and now we're just going to wait and as you can see it's already saying my amazing app without actually having to type anything in it's pulling that from our uh, config.xml and we're ready to build so now we just got to wait for that to build for Android and Windows Phone it's not going to build for iOS because I haven't set up my iOS signing I'll show you how to do that in another video sometime if you want it uh, because I can do that now with Mac OS X okay so now that that's been created I can go onto my Android phone and scan the barcode that's generated press OK and I'm going to download that APK to my phone so that's downloading done open that up and as you can see it requires every single permission on my phone um, just don't worry about that for now we'll get into that into another video if you want it just hit install and it just says this is my app and if I try and change the screen rotation it doesn't change because what I did was I locked this to portrait only so it won't go in landscape even though I'm waving my phone around right now and trying to get it to go into landscape it just doesn't work so that's it for this video don't forget to comment rate and subscribe I will be showing you how to upload your app to the Android store and possibly the iOS app store sometime soon as well as looking at permissions so stick around for that uh, so yeah that's it for this video don't forget to comment rate and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video